In the deep heart of India, beyond the last farms and villages, is the forest that inspired Rudyard Kipling to write the Jungle Book. Named after this river, this is Pench National Park. And it is a part of an immense biosphere on the Deccan Plateau. The Deccan Plateau covers vast portions of Central and South India, pushed up by the Western Ghats and the Nilgiri Hills in the West and Southwest, the Eastern Ghats in the East, and loosely bounded by the Vindhyas and the Satpura mountain ranges in the North. The mountain ranges, such as this section of the Sahyadri Mountains that forms the Western Ghats, cast a rain shadow on the plateau. So while the coasts receive humid winds and heavy rainfalls, most of the Deccan Plateau remains hot and dry. The clouds pass enticingly close, but these will not stay over this region for long. The rains are late this year. In the height of summer, daytime temperatures rise to an unbearable 45 degrees Celsius and the sun shines strongly. The ground is baked dry and plants and trees have to be tough if they are to survive in such extreme conditions. The last rains were more than eight months ago and the parched leaves are crumbling in the heat. But the flora and fauna here have evolved to endure these harsh temperatures. A female Nilgai, which is the largest species of antelope found in Asia, escapes the worst of the heat by trotting along the shady dry forest edge in the early morning. From time to time, she shows the fancy markings on her hooves. In this merciless climate, birds regulate their temperatures by leaving their mouths open. Unlike humans, the birds cannot sweat, so they simply sit with their mouths open to encourage heat loss. The terminology for this behavior is known as gula fluttering. Hunger and thirst are no excuses for losing focus of predatory birds like this exquisite white-eyed buzzard. The razor-sharp talons would make short work of any small bird. The search for food and water is an ongoing struggle and any precious morsel dropped may easily get lost amongst the dry leaves. The bulbul may have dropped its food 
but the strong grasp of a grey langur will ensure that no whole berries are dropped easily from its hands. Any leftovers dropped to the ground though are readily taken by the spotted deer. Langurs and spotted deer travel through the forest together. They have an important relationship. Langurs have good vision and they are adept at getting to food sources that are beyond the reach of the deer. The spotted deer can also spot any danger from the ground level and alert the langurs. This is a relatively peaceful morning though. There is even time to lock antlers and practice for the upcoming rutting season. Sambar deer have been classed as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, but they are also found in good numbers inside Bench National Park. Spotting a herd grazing peacefully is a beautiful sight, but there is trouble in paradise. Suddenly, the jungle erupts in a soundscape of alarm calls. Indian wild dogs scamper along, causing some uneasiness amongst the Sambal deer. The peacocks and the spotted deer are also alarmed and the forest is alive with their calls. The Langur sentinel has also sounded the alarm and it is time to make haste. They know that these calls are not for the Indian wild dogs, but something much bigger and powerful coming their way. Something that has used its strength to create these huge claw marks on this coarsely white surface of this aptly named Indian ghost country. Blurred stripes blending surprisingly well in the dry forest. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. The most feared creature in Kipling's Jungle Book and the largest living cat in the world. This is one of the grown-up cubs of a tigress called Pardev. Not really interested in hunting, but it is just trying to escape the burning heat. It joins its siblings and mother in the main pool inside the park. Finding tigers in the wild is difficult, so seeing so many enjoying a cool bath together is a spectacular sight. But we cannot escape the fact that tigers are usually very solitary creatures. As time goes on, the family will begin to go its different ways. Each individual tiger needs a large territory for itself and before long, loving cuddles will give way to angry disputes.
either the mother herself or the strongest cub will remain to rule this particular territory. As we travel further into the forest, we are reminded about the high diversity of birds found in the Pension National Park. An Indian pita adds a shock of colour to the dry forest floor. A bee eater keeps a lookout for insects. A shy Sarkir Malkoha moves swiftly in the forest canopy. And as a jungle owlet blends in perfectly in hidden hunting mode amongst the teak wood. We come across another young tigress cooling off in a shrinking pool on her own. Sher Khan may have been the villain in the Jungle Book, but top predators like this tigress are the essential and misunderstood key to a successful ecosystem. Having a predator like her keeps a healthy prey population of herbivores, such as the deer. The antelopes don't overgraze, and this allows the forest to grow in a sustainable way. Moist tracks around her give a window into the various butterfly species found here. Salt is a vital nutrient, especially for male butterflies, so exposed salt licks like these turn into a butterfly wonderland. The butterflies and the tiger are at the opposite ends of the food chain, but they are both equally important for a healthy ecosystem. Wildflowers rely on pollinators, such as this blue pansy butterfly. Wildflowers and grassland habitats provide a home for other animals, like this wild boar. Asian golden jackals patrol the forest. And by the edge of a small lake, we find an Indian bison or go resting. Pied kingfishers hunt for fish 
in the shrinking body of water. And by the water's edge are a pair of tiny little grebes. The male is sporting some fancy colours just in time for the breeding season. As the late afternoon drags on, a changeable hawk eagle feasts on an unlucky small bird. Undisturbed, it can feed well into the late evening. The oncoming evening is a sign for the spotted deer and other creatures to look for safe sleeping pastures. And it is time for us to say goodbye to Pench National Park. To make this short film, we travelled to Pench National Park from the city of Nagpur. Arriving early at Nagpur railway station, just in time to catch the sunrise, and just as well because the station gets busy fast. The cities and towns give way to farms where livestock run free and traditional village life goes on. The forest inside is a typical dry forest of central India, but we were amazed at the rich diversity of species. Birds can be hard to film, but with some effort, there are decent rewards, such as this black-headed oriole, a crested serpent eagle, a grey-headed fish eagle, a rock agama lizard hiding well from the sharp eyes of a white-throated kingfisher. The biggest prize of Pench are obviously the beautiful tigers. But smaller mammals are found in excellent numbers too. A hundred years on from when Rudyard Kipling wrote the Jungle Book, Pench National Park remains one of India's wildlife gems.